said Arma Pundarika, or the lotus of the true law, homage to all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Chapter 1, Introductory. Thus have I heard, once upon a time the Lord was staying at Ragagriha on the Gridhrakuta mountain with a numerous assemblage of monks, 1,200 monks, all of them arhats, stainless, free, from depravity, self-controlled, thoroughly emancipated in thought and knowledge of noble breed, like unto great elephants, having done their task, done their duty, acquitted their charge, reached the goal, in whom the ties which bound them to existence were wholly destroyed, whose minds were thoroughly emancipated by perfect knowledge, who had reached the utmost perfection in subduing all their thoughts, who were possessed of the transcendent faculties. Eminent disciples such as the Venerable Agnata Kaundinya, the Venerable Asvagit, the Venerable Vashpa, the Venerable Mahanaman, the Venerable Bhadrika, the Venerable Maha Kasyapa, the Venerable Kasyapa of Uruvilva, the Venerable Kasyapa of Nadi, the Venerable Kasyapa of Gaya, the Venerable Sariputra, the Venerable Maha Madhgalyayana, the Venerable Maha Katyayana, the Venerable Aniruddha, the Venerable Rivata, the Venerable Kapina, the Venerable Gavampati, the Venerable Pilin Davatsa, the Venerable Fakula, the Venerable Bharad Vaga, the Venerable Maha Kaushthila, the Venerable Nanda alias Mahananda, the Venerable Upananda, the Venerable Sundara Nanda, the Venerable Purna Maitrayaniputra, the Venerable Sibuti, the Venerable Rahula, with them yet other great disciples as the Venerable Ananda, still under training, and 2,000 other monks, some of whom still under training, the other masters, with 6,000 nuns having at their head Maha Pragapati and the nun Yasodhara, the mother of Rahula, along with her train, further with 80,000 bodhisattvas, all unable to slide back, endowed with the spells of supreme, perfect enlightenment, firmly standing in wisdom, who moved onward the never deviating wheel of the law, who had propitiated many hundred thousands of Buddhas, who under many hundred thousands of Buddhas had planted the roots of goodness, had been intimate with many hundred thousands of Buddhas, were in body and mind fully penetrated with the feeling of charity, able in communicating the wisdom of the Tathagatas, very wise, having reached the perfection of wisdom, renowned in many hundred thousands of worlds, having saved many hundred thousand myriads of kotis of beings, such as the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Mangusri as Prince Royal, the Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas, Avalokitesvara, Mahasthama Prapta, Sarvarthanaman, Nityo di Yukta, Anikship Tadura, Ratnapani, Baishagiaraga, Prada Nasura, Ratna Khandra, Ratna Prabha, Purna Khandra, Mahavikramin, Trelo Kavikraman, Ananta Vikraman, Mahapratibana, Sata Tasa Mitabi Yukta, Dara Nidara, Akshayamati, Padmasri, Nakshatra Raga, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Maitreya, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Simha. With them were also the sixteen virtuous men to begin with, Bhadrapala, to wit, Bhadrapala, Ratnakara, Susartha Vaha, Naradatta, Guha Gupta, Varuna Datta, Indra Datta, Uttaramati, Viseshamati, Varhamanamati, 
Amogar Darsan, Susam Sita, Suvikranta Vikrami, Anupama Mati, Surya Garba, and Dara Nidara, besides 80,000 Bodhisattvas, among whom the four mentioned were the chiefs. Further, Sakra, the ruler of the Celestials, with 20,000 gods, his followers such as the god Khandra, the moon, the god Surya, the sun, the god Samantaganda, the wind, the god Ratnaprabha, the god Avabhasaprabha, and others. Further, the four great rulers of the cardinal points with 30,000 gods in their train, namely the great ruler Virudaka, the great ruler Virupaksha, the great ruler Dhritarashtra, and the great ruler Vaisravana, the god Isvara, and the god Mahesvara, each followed by 30,000 gods. Further, Brahma Sahampati and his 12,000 followers. The Brahma Kiyayika gods, amongst whom Brahma Sikin and Brahma Gyotish Prabha, with the other 12,000 Brahma Kayika gods, together with the eight Naga kings and many hundred thousand myriads of Kotis, of Nagas in their train, namely the Naga king Nanda, the Naga king Upananda, Sagara, Vasuki, Takshaka, Manasvin, Anavatapta, and Utpalaka, further the four Kinara kings with many hundred thousand myriads of Kotis of followers, namely the Kinara king Druma, the Kinara king Mahadharma, the Kinara king Sudharma, and the Kinara king Dharmadara, besides the four divine beings called Gandharvakayikas, with many hundred thousand Gandharvas in their suite, namely the Gandharva Manogna, the Gandharva Manogna Zvara, the Gandharva Madura, and the Gandharva Madhyarasvara, further the four chiefs of the demons, followed by many hundred thousand myriads of kotis of demons, namely the chief of the demons, Bali, Koraskanda, Vimakitri, and Rahu, along with the four Garuda chiefs, followed by many hundred thousands myriads of kotis of Garudas, namely the Garuda chiefs, Mahategas, Mahakaya, Mahaparna and Mahardiprapta, and with Agatasatru, king of Magadha, the son of Vaidehi. Now, at that time, it was that the Lord surrounded, attended, honored, revered, venerated, worshipped by the four classes of hearers. After expounding the Dharma Paryaya, called the Great Exposition a text of great development serving to instruct bodhisattvas and proper to all buddhas sat cross-legged on the seat of the law and entered upon the meditation termed the station of the exposition of infinity his body was motionless and his mind had reached perfect tranquility and as soon as the lord had entered upon his meditation there fell a great rain of divine flowers Mandaravas and great Mandaravas, Mangushakas and great Mangushakas, covering the Lord and the four classes of hearers, while the whole Buddha field shook in six ways. It moved, removed, trembled, trembled from one end to the other, tossed, tossed along. Then did those who were assembled and sitting together in that congregation, monks, nuns, male and female, lay devotees, gods, nagas, goblins, gandharvas, demons, garudas, kanaras, great serpents, men and beings not human, as well as governors of a region, ru rulers of armies and rulers of four continents, all of them with their followers, gaze on the Lord in astonishment and amazement and ecstasy. And at that moment, there issued a ray from within the circle of hair between the eyebrows of the Lord. It extended over 1,800,000 Buddha fields in the eastern quarter, so that all those Buddha fields appeared wholly illuminated by its radiance down to the great hell of Viki and up to the limit of existence.
and the beings in any of the six states of existence became visible, all without exception. Likewise, the Lord's Buddhas, staying, living, and existing in those Buddha fields, became all visible, and the law preached by them could be entirely heard by all beings. And the monks, nuns, lay devotees, male and female, yogins, and students of yoga, those who had obtained the fruition of the paths of sanctification, and those who had not, they too became visible. And the bodhisattvas, mahasattvas, in those Buddha fields who applied the bodhisattva course with ability due to their earnest belief in numerous and various lessons and the fundamental ideas, they too became all visible. Likewise, the Lord's Buddhas in those Buddha fields who had reached final nirvana became visible, all of them. And the stupas made of jewels and containing the relics of the extinct Buddhas became all visible in those Buddha fields. Then rose in the mind of the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Maitreya, this thought, Oh, how great a wonder does the Tathagata display! What may be the cause, what the reason of the Lord producing so great a wonder as this? In such astonishing, prodigious, inconceivable, powerful miracles now appear, although the Lord is absorbed in meditation. Why, let me inquire about this matter. Who would be able here to explain it to me? He then thought, here is Manguzri, the Prince Royal, who has plied his office under former Ginas, planted the roots of goodness while worshipping many Buddhas. This Manguzri, the Prince Royal, must have witnessed before such signs of the former Tathagatas, those Arhats, those perfectly enlightened Buddhas. Of yore he must have enjoyed the grand conversations on the law. Therefore will I inquire about this matter with Mangusri, the Prince Royal. In the four classes of the audience, monks, nuns, male and female lay devotees, numerous gods, nagas, goblins, Gandharvas, demons, Garudas, Kinaras, great serpents, men and beings not human, on seeing the magnificence of this great miracle of the Lord, were struck with astonishment, amazement, and curiosity, and thought, let us inquire why this magnificent miracle has been produced by the great power of the Lord. At the same moment, at that very instant, the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva, Maitreya, knew in his mind the thoughts arising in the minds of the four classes of hearers, and he spoke to Mangusri, the Prince Royal. What, O oh, Mangusri, is the cause, what is the reason of this wonderful, prodigious, miraculous shine having been produced by the Lord? Look, how these 18,000 Buddha fields appear variegated, extremely beautiful, directed by Tathagatas and superintended by Tathagatas. Then it was that Maitreya, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, addressed Mangustri. The Prince Royal in the following stanzas. 1. Why, Mangustri, does this ray darted by the guide of men shine forth from between his brows, this single ray issuing from the circle of hair, and why this abundant rain of Mandaravas? 2. The gods overjoyed let drop Mangushakas in sandal powder, divine, fragrant, and delicious. 3. This earth is on every side replete with splendor, and all the four classes of the assembly are filled with delight, while the whole field shakes in six different ways frightfully. 4. And that ray in the eastern quarter illuminates the whole of 18,000 Buddha fields simultaneously, so that those fields appear as gold-colored. 5. The universe as far as the hell of Viki and the extreme limit of existence with all beings of those fields living in any of the six states of existence, those who are leaving one state to be born in another. 6. Their various and different actions in those states have become visible, whether they are in a happy, unhappy, low, eminent, or intermediate position, all that I see from this place. 7. I see also the Buddhas, those lions of kings, revealing and showing the essence of the law, comforting many cotis of creatures and emitting sweet-sounding voices. 8. They let go forth each in his own field, a deep, sublime, wonderful voice while proclaiming the Buddha laws by means of myriads of cotis of illustrations and proofs. 
9. And to the ignorant creatures who are oppressed with toils and distressed in mind by birth and old age, they announce the bliss of rest, saying, This is the end of trouble, O monks. 10. And to those who are possessed of strength and vigor and who have acquired merit by virtue or earnest belief in the Buddhas, they show the vehicle of the Pratyaka Buddhas by observing this rule of the law. 11. And the other sons of the Sugata who, striving after superior knowledge, have constantly accomplished their various tasks, them also they admonish to enlightenment. 12. From this place, O oh, Mangugosha, I see and hear such things in thousands of kotis of other particulars. Besides, I will only describe some of them. 13. I see in many fields bodhisattvas by many thousands of kotis, like sands of the Ganges, who are producing enlightenment according to the different degree of their power. 14. There are some who charitably bestow wealth, gold, silver, gold money, pearls, jewels, conch shells stones, coral, male and female slaves, horses and sheep. 15. As well as litters adorned with jewels, they are spending gifts with glad hearts, developing themselves for superior enlightenment in the hope of gaining the vehicle. 16. Thus they think, the best and most excellent vehicle in the whole of the threefold world is the Buddha vehicle magnified by the Sugatas. May I forsooth soon gain it after my spending such gifts. 17. Some give carriages yoked with four horses and furnished with benches, flowers, banners, and flags. Others give objects made of precious substances. 18. Some again give their children and wives. Others their own flesh, or offer when bidden their hands and feet striving to gain supreme enlightenment. Some give their heads, others their eyes, others their dear own body, and after cheerfully bestowing their gifts they aspire to the knowledge of the Tathagatas. Here and there, O Mangusri, I behold beings who have abandoned their flourishing kingdoms, harems, and continents, left all their counselors and kinsmen, and betaken themselves to the guides of the world to ask for the most excellent law. For the sake of bliss, they put on reddish-yellow robes and shave hair and beard. I see also many bodhisattvas like monks living in the forest and others inhabiting the empty wilderness engaged in reciting and reading. And some bodhisattvas I see, who, full of wisdom or constancy, betake themselves to mountain caves where, by cultivating and meditating the Buddha knowledge, they arrive at its perception. Others who have renounced all sensual desires by purifying their own self have cleared their sphere and obtained the five transcendent faculties, live in the wilderness as true sons of the Sugata. Some are standing firm, the feet put together, and the hands joined in token of respect towards the leaders, and are praising joyfully the king of the leading Guinness in thousands of stanzas. Some thoughtful, meek, and tranquil, who have mastered the niceties of the course of duty, question the highest of men about the law, and retain in their memory what they have learnt. And I see here and there some sons of the principal Gina, who, after completely developing their own self, are preaching the law to many kotis of living beings with many myriads of illustrations and reasons. 28. Joyfully they proclaim the law, rousing many bodhisattvas. After conquering the evil one with his hosts and vehicles, they strike the drum of the law. I see some sons of the Sugata, humble, calm, and quiet in conduct, living under the command of the Sugatas and honored by men, gods, goblins, and titans. Others, again, who have retired to woody thickets, are saving the creatures in the hells by emitting radiance from their body and rouse them to enlightenment. There are some sons of the Gina who dwell in the forest, abiding in vigor, completely renouncing sloth and actively engaged in walking. It is by energy that they are striving for supreme enlightenment. Others complete their course by keeping a constant purity and an unbroken morality like precious stones and jewels. By morality do these strive for supreme enlightenment. Some sons of the Gina, whose strength consists in forbearance, patiently endure abuse, censure, and threats from proud monks. They try to attain enlightenment by dint of forbearance. Further, I see bodhisattvas who have forsaken all wanton pleasures, shun unwise companions, and 
delight in having intercourse with genteel men, Arias, who with avoidance of any distraction of thoughts and with attentive mind during thousands of cotes of years have meditated in the caves of the wilderness, these strive for enlightenment by dint of meditation. 36. Some again offer in presence of the genus and the assemblage of disciples gifts consisting in food, hard and soft meat and drink, medicaments for the sick in plenty and abundance. 37. Others offer in presence of the genus and the assemblage of disciples hundreds of coatees of clothes worth thousands of coatees in garments of priceless value. They bestow... <coughs> They bestow in presence of the Sugatas hundreds of kotis of monasteries which they have caused to be built of precious substances in sandalwood and which are furnished with numerous lodgings or couches. Some present the leaders of men and their disciples with neat and lovely gardens abounding with fruits and beautiful flowers to serve as places of daily recreation. When they have, with joyful feelings, made such various and splendid donations, they rouse their energy in order to obtain enlightenment. These are those who try to reach supreme enlightenment by means of charitableness. Others set forth the law of quietness by many myriads of illustrations and proofs. They preach it to thousands of kotis of living beings. These are tending to supreme enlightenment by science. There are sons of the Sugata who try to reach enlightenment by wisdom. They understand the law of indifference and avoid acting at the antinomy of things, unattached like birds in the sky. Further I see, O oh, Mangugosha, many bodhisattvas, who have displayed steadiness under the rule of the departed Sugatas and now are worshipping the relics of the Ginas. I see thousands of kotis of stupas, numerous as the sand of the Ganges, which have been raised by these sons of the Gina, and now adorn kotis of grounds. Those magnificent stupas made of seven precious substances with their thousands of kotis of umbrellas and banners measure in height no less than 5,000 yoganas and 2,000 in circumference. 46. They are always decorated with flags. A multitude of bells is constantly heard sounding. Men, gods, goblins, and titans pay their worship with flowers, perfumes, and music. Such honor do the sons of the Sugata render to the relics of the Ginas, so that all directions of space are brightened as by the celestial coral trees in full blossom. From this spot I behold all this, those numerous kotis of creatures, both this world and heaven, covered with flowers owing to the single ray shot forth by the Gina. Oh, how powerful is the leader of men, how extensive and bright is his knowledge, that a single beam darted by him over the world renders visible so many thousands of fields. We are astonished at seeing this sign and this wonder, so great, so incomprehensible. Explain me the matter, O oh Mangusvara. The sons of Buddha are anxious to know it. The four classes of the congregation, in joyful expectation, gaze on thee, O oh hero, and on me, glad in their hearts, remove their doubts, grant a revelation, O son of the Sugata. 52. Why is it that the Sugata has now emitted such a light? Oh, how great is the power of the leader of men! Oh, how extensive and holy is his knowledge! 53. That one ray extending from him all over the world makes visible many thousands of fields. It must be for some purpose that this great ray has been emitted. Is the Lord of men to show the primordial laws which he, the highest of men, discovered on the terrace of enlightenment? Or is he to prophesy the bodhisattvas their future destiny? There must be a weighty reason why so many thousands of fields have been rendered visible, variegated, splendid, and shining with gems while Buddhas of infinite sight are appearing. Maitreya asked the son of Gina, men, gods, goblins, and titans, the four classes of the congregation are eagerly awaiting what answer Mangusvara shall give an explanation. Whereupon Mangusri, the Prince Royal, addressed Maitreya, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, and the whole assembly of Bodhisattvas in these words. <clears throat> 
It is the intention of the Tathagata young men of good family to begin a grand discourse for the teaching of the law, to pour the great rain of the law, to make resound the great drum of the law, to raise the great banner of the law, to kindle the great torch of the law, to blow the great conch trumpet of the law, and to strike the great timbal of the law. Again, it is the intention of the Tathagata, young men of good family, to make a grand exposition of the law this very day. Thus it appears to me, young men of good family, as I have witnessed a similar sign of the former Tathagatas, the Arhats, the perfectly enlightened. Those former Tathagatas, etc., they too emitted a lustrous ray, and I am convinced that the Tathagata is about to deliver a grand discourse for the teaching of the law, and make his grand speech in the law everywhere heard, he having shown such a foretoken. And because the Tathagata, etc., wishes that this Dharma Pariyaya, meeting opposition in all the world, be heard everywhere, therefore does he display so great a miracle, and this foretoken consisting in the luster occasioned by the emission of a ray. I remember, young men of good family, that in the days of yore, many immeasurable, inconceivable, immense, infinite, countless aeons, more than countless aeons ago, nay, long and very long before there was born a Tathagata called Khandra Surya Pradipa, an Arhat, endowed with science and conduct, a Sugata, knower of the world, an incomparable tamer of men, a teacher and ruler of gods and men, a Buddha and Lord. He showed the law. He revealed the duteous course, which is holy at its commencement, holy in its middle, holy at the end, good in substance and form, complete and perfect, correct and pure. That is to say, to the disciples he preached the law contained the four noble truths, and started from the chain of causes and effects, tending to overcome birth, decrepitude, sickness, death, sorrow, lamentation, woe, grief, despondency, and finally leading to nirvana. And to the bodhisattvas, he preached the law, connected with the six perfections, and terminating in the knowledge of the omniscient after the attainment of supreme perfect enlightenment. Now, young men of good family, long before the time of that Tathagata, Khandra Surya Pradipa, the Arhat, there had appeared a Tathagata, likewise called Khandra Surya Pradipa, after whom O Agita. There were 20,000 Tathagatas, all of them bearing the name of Khandra Surya Pradipa, of the same lineage and family name, to wit, of Bharad Vaga. All those 20,000 Tathagatas, O Agita, from the first to the last, showed the law, revealed the course which is holy at its commencement, holy in its middle, holy at the end. The aforesaid, Lord Khandra Surya Pradipa, the Tathagata, when a young prince, and not yet having left home to embrace the ascetic life, had eight sons, the young princes Sumati, Anantamati, Ratnamati, Viseshamati, Vimatisamudgatin, Goshamati, and Dharmamati. These eight young princes, Agita, sons to the Lord, Khandra, Surya, Pradipa, the Tathagata, had an immense fortune each of them was in possession of four great continents, where they exercised a kingly sway. When they saw that the Lord had left his home to become an ascetic, and heard that he had attained supreme perfect enlightenment, they forsook all of them the pleasures of royalty and followed the example of the Lord by resigning the world. All of them strove to reach superior enlightenment and become preachers of the law, while constantly leading a holy life. Those young princes planted roots of goodness under many thousands of Buddhas. It was at that time, Agita, that the Lord Khandra Surya Pradipa, the Tathagata, after expounding the Dharma Pariyaya, called the Great Exposition a text of great extension serving to instruct bodhisattvas and proper twelve Buddhas at the same moment and instant, at the same gathering of the classes of hearers, sat cross-legged on the same seat of the law and entered upon the meditation, termed the station of the exposition of infinity 
His body was motionless, and his mind had reached perfect tranquility. And as soon as the Lord had entered upon meditation, there fell a great rain of divine flowers, mandaravas and great mandaravas, mangushakas and great mangushakas, covering the Lord and the four classes of hearers, while the whole Buddha field shook in six ways. It moved, removed, trembled, trembled from one end to the other, tossed, tossed along. Then did those who were assembled and sitting together at that congregation, monks, nuns, male and female lay devotees, gods, nagas, goblins, gandharvas, demons, garudas, kinaras, great serpents, men and beings not human, as well as governors of a region, rulers of armies and rulers of four continents, all of them with their followers gazed on the Lord in astonishment, in amazement, in ecstasy. And at that moment, there issued a ray from within the circle of hair between the eyebrows of the Lord. It extended over 1,800,000 Buddha fields in the eastern quarter, so that all those Buddha fields appeared wholly illuminated by its radiance, just like the Buddha fields do now, O Agita. At that juncture, Agita, there were twenty kotis of bodhisattvas following the Lord. All hearers of the law in that assembly, on seeing how the world was illuminated by the luster of that ray, felt astonishment, amazement, ecstasy, and curiosity. Now it happened to Gita that under the rule of the aforesaid Lord, there was a bodhisattva called Veraprabha, who had 800 pupils. It was to this bodhisattva, Veraprabha, that the Lord, on rising from his meditation, revealed the Dharma Paryaya, called the Lotus of the True Law. He spoke during fully Sixty intermediate kalpas, always sitting on the same seat with a movable body and tranquil mind. And the whole assembly continued sitting on the same seats, listening to the preaching of the Lord for sixty intermediate kalpas. There being not a single creature in that assembly who felt fatigue of body or mind. As the Lord Khandra Surya Pradipa, the Tathagata, during sixty intermediate kalpas, had been expounding the Dharma Paryaya, called the Lotus of the True Law, a text of great development, serving to instruct bodhisattvas and proper twelve Buddhas, he instantly announced his complete nirvana to the world, including the gods, Maras and Brahmas, to all creatures, including ascetics, Brahmins, gods, men and demons, saying, Today, O monks, this very night in the middle watch, will the Tathagata, by entering the element of absolute nirvana, become wholly extinct. Thereupon, Agita, the Lord Khandra Surya Pradipa, the Tathagata, predestinated the Bodhisattva called Sri Garba to supreme perfect enlightenment and then spoke thus to the whole assembly. O monks, this Bodhisattva Sri Garba, here shall immediately after me attain supreme perfect enlightenment and become Vima Lanetra, the Tathagata. Thereafter, Agita, that very night, at that very watch, the Lord, Khandra, Surya, Pradipa, the Tathagata, became extinct by entering the element of absolute nirvana. And the aforementioned Dharma Paryaya, termed the Lotus of the True Law, was kept in memory by the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Varaprabha, during 80 intermediate kalpas. Kalpas did the Bodhisattva Varaprabha keep and reveal the commandment of the Lord who had entered nirvana. Now it so happened to Gita that the eight sons of the Lord, Khandra, Surya, Pradipi, Pradipa, Mati, and the rest were pupils to that very Bodhisattva, Vara, Prabha. They were by him made ripe for supreme perfect enlightenment, and in after times they saw and worshipped many hundred thousands of of myriads of kotis of Buddhas, all of whom had attained supreme perfect enlightenment, the last of them being Dipankara, the Tathagata. Amongst those eight pupils, there was one Bodhisattva who attached an extreme value to gain, honor, and praise, and was fond of glory. But all the words and letters one taught him faded from his memory did not stick, so he got the appellation of Yasaskama. He had propitiated many hundred 
thousand myriads of kotis of Buddhas by that root of goodness, and afterwards esteemed, honored, respected, revered, venerated, worshipped them. Perhaps, Agita, thou feelest some doubt. Perplexity or misgiving that in those days at that time there was another Bodhisattva Mahasattva Voraprabha, pre preacher of the law. But do not think so. Why? Because it is myself who in those days at that time was the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Voraprabha, preacher of the law. And that Bodhisattva named Yasaskama, the lazy one, it is thyself, Agita who in those days at the time were the Bodhisattva named Yasaskama, the lazy one. And so Agita, having once seen a similar foretoken of the Lord, I infer from a similar ray being emitted just now, that the Lord is about to expound the Dharma Parayaya, called the Lotus of the True Law. And on that occasion, in order to treat the subject more copiously, Mangusri, the Prince Royal, uttered the following stanzas, 57. I remember a past period inconceivable, illimited, countless ago, when the highest of beings, the Gina of the name of Khandra Surya Pradipa, was in existence. He preached the true law. He, the leader of creatures, he educated an infinite number of kotis of beings, and roused inconceivably many bodhisattvas to acquiring supreme Buddha knowledge. And the eight sons born to him, the leader, when he was Prince Royal, no sooner saw that the great sage had embraced ascetic life than they resigned worldly pleasures and became monks. Sixty, and the Lord of the world proclaimed the law and revealed to thousands of kotis of living beings the sutra, the development which by name is called the excellent exposition of infinity. 61. Immediately after delivering his speech, the leader crossed his legs and entered upon the meditation of the excellent exposition of the infinite. There on his seat of the law, the eminent seer continued absorbed in meditation. 62. And there fell a celestial rain of mandarabas, while the drums of heaven resounded without being struck. The gods and elves in the sky paid honor to the highest of men. And simultaneously, all the fields of Buddha began trembling. A wonder it was, a great prodigy. Then the chief emitted from between his brows one extremely beautiful ray, which, moving to the eastern quarter, glittered, illuminating the world all over the extent of 18,000 fields. It manifested the vanishing and appearing of beings. Some of the fields then seemed jeweled. Others showed the hue of lapis lazuli, all splendid, Extremely beautiful, owing to the radiance of the ray from the leader. Gods and men, as well as Nagas, goblins, Gandharvas, nymphs, Kinaras, and those occupied with serving the Sugata, became visible in the spheres and paid their devotion. 67. The Buddhas also, those self-born beings, appeared of their own accord, resembling golden columns. Like unto a golden disc with a lapis lazuli, they revealed the law in the midst of the assembly. The disciples indeed are not to be counted. The disciples of Sugata are numberless, yet the luster of the ray renders them all visible in every field. Energetic, without breach or flaw in their course, similar to gems and jewels, the sons of the leaders of men are visible in the mountain caves where they are dwelling. Numerous bodhisattvas, like the sand of the Ganges, who are spending all their wealth in giving alms, who have the strength of patience, are devoted to contemplation and wise, become all of them visible by that ray. Immovable, unshaken, firm in patience, devoted to contemplation and absorbed in meditation, are seen the true sons of the Sugatas, while they are striving for supreme enlightenment by dint of meditation. They preach the law in many spheres and point to the true, quiet, spotless state they know. Such is the effect produced by the power of the Sugata. And all the four classes of hearers on seeing the power of the mighty, Khandra Kadipa, were filled with joy and asked one another, How is this? 74. And soon afterwards, as the leader of the world, worshipped by men, gods, and goblins, rose from his meditation, he addressed his son, Varaprabha, the wise bodhisattva and preacher of the law. Thou art wise, the eye and refuge of the world. Thou art the trustworthy keeper of my law, and canst bear witness as to the treasure of laws which I am to lay bare to the well of living beings. Then... 
After rousing and stimulating, praising and lauding many bodhisattvas, did the Gina proclaim the supreme laws during fully sixty intermediate kalpas. And whatever excellent supreme law was proclaimed by the Lord of the world, while continuing sitting on the very same seat, was kept in memory by Varaprabha, the son of Gina, the preacher of the law. And after the Gina and leader had manifested the supreme law and stimulated the numerous crowd, he spoke that day towards the world, including the gods, as follows. I have manifested the rule of the law. I have shown the nature of the law. Now, O monks, it is the time of my nirvana this very night in the middle watch. Be zealous and strong in persuasion. Apply yourselves to my lessons for... The Ginas, the great seers, are but rarely met with in the laps of myriads of kotis of aeons. The many sons of Buddha were struck with grief and filled with extreme sorrow when they heard the voice of the highest of men announcing that his nirvana was near at hand. To comfort so inconceivably many kotis of living beings, the king of kings said, Be not afraid, O monks, after my nirvana there shall be another Buddha. The wise bodhisattva, Sri Garba, after finishing his course in faultless knowledge, shall reach highest supreme enlightenment and become a Gina under the name of Vima La Granitra. That very night in the middle watch, he met complete extinction like a lamp when the cause of its burning is exhausted. His relics were distributed and of his stupas, there was an infinite number of myriads of kotis. The monks and nuns at the time being who strove after supreme highest enlightenment, numerous as sand of the Ganges, applied themselves to the commandment of the Sugata. And the monk who then was the preacher of the law and the keeper of the law, Varaprabha, expounded for fully 80 intermediate kalpas the highest laws according to the commandment of the Sugata. He had 800 pupils who, all of them, were by him brought to full development. They saw many kotis of Buddhas, great sages whom they worshipped. By following the regular course, they became Buddhas in several spheres. And as they followed one another in immediate succession, they successfully foretold each other's future destiny to Buddhaship. The last of these Buddhas following one another was Dipankara, he, the supreme god of gods, Honored by crowds of sages, educated thousands of kotis of living beings. Among the pupils of Veraprabha, the son of Gina, at the time of his teaching the law, was one slothful, covetous, greedy of gain and cleverness. He was also excessively desirous of glory, but very fickle so that the lessons dictated to him in his own reading faded from his memory as soon as learnt. His name was Yasaskama, by which he was known everywhere. By the accumulated merit of that good action, spotted as it was, he propitiated thousands of kotis, of Buddhas, whom he rendered ample honor. He went through the regular course of duties and saw the present Buddha, Sakye, Shima. He shall be the last to reach superior enlightenment and become a lord known by the family name of Maitreya, who shall educate thousands of kotis of creatures. He who then, under the rule of the extinct Sugatha, was so slothful, was thyself, and it was I who then was the preacher of the law. As on seeing a foretoken of this kind, I recognize a sign, such as I have seen manifested of yore, therefore, and on that account I know, that decidedly the chief of Ginas, the supreme king of the Shakyas, the all-seeing, who knows the highest truth, is about to pronounce the excellent sutra which I have heard before. That very sign displayed at present, is a proof of the skillfulness of the leaders. The line of the Shakyas is, is to make an exhortation to declare the fixed nature of the law. Be well prepared and well minded. Join your hands. He who is affectionate and merciful to the world is going to speak, is going to pour the endless rain of the law and refresh those that are waiting for enlightenment. And if some should feel doubt, uncertainty, or misgiving in any respect, then the wise one shall remove it for his children, the bodhisattvas here striving after enlightenment. Chapter 2 Skillfulness The Lord then rose with recollection and consciousness from his meditation 
and forthwith addressed the venerable Shariputra. The Buddha knowledge, Shariputra, is profound, difficult to understand, difficult to comprehend. It is difficult for all disciples and Pratyeka Buddhas to fathom the knowledge arrived at by the Tathagatas and that Sariputra, because the Tathagatas have worshipped many hundred thousand myriads of Kotis of Buddhas, because they have fulfilled their course for supreme, complete enlightenment during many hundred thousand myriads of Kotis of Aeons, because they have wandered far, displaying energy and possessed of wonderful and marvelous properties, because possessed of properties difficult to understand because they have found out things difficult to understand. The mystery of the Tathagatas is difficult to understand, Sariputra, because when they explain the laws or phenomena, things that have their causes in themselves, they do so by means of skillfulness, by the display of knowledge, by arguments, reasons, fundamental ideas, interpretations and suggestions by a variety of skillfulness they are able to release creatures that are attached to one point or another the tathagata sariputra have acquired the highest perfection in skillfulness in the display of knowledge they are endowed with wonderful properties such as the display of free and unchecked knowledge the powers, the absence of hesitation, the independent conditions, the strength of the organs, the constituents of Bodhi, the contemplations, emancipations, meditations, the degrees of concentration of mind, the Tathagatas, Sariputra, are able to expound various things and have something wonderful and marvelous. Enough, Sariputra. Let it suffice to say that the Tathagatas have something extremely wonderful, Sariputra. <clears throat> None but the Tathagata, Sariputra, can impart to a Tathagata those laws which the Tathagata knows. And all laws, Sariputra, are taught by the Tathagata and him alone. No one but he knows all laws what they are, how they are, like what they are, of what characteristics, and of what nature they are. And on that occasion, to set forth the same subject more copiously, the Lord uttered the following stanzas. One, innumerable, are the great heroes in the world that embraces gods and men, the totality of creatures is unable to completely know the leaders. None can know their powers and states of emancipation, their absence of hesitation and Buddha properties such as they are. Of yore have I followed in presence of Kotis, of Buddhas, the good course which is profound, subtle, difficult to understand, and most difficult to find. After pursuing that career during an inconceivable number of Kotis of Aeons, I have on the Terrace of Enlightenment discovered the fruit thereof. And therefore I recognize, like the other chiefs of the world, how it is, like what it is, and what are its characteristics. It is impossible to explain it. It is unutterable, nor is there such a being in the world to whom this law could be explained, or who would be able to understand it when explained, with exception of the bodhisattvas, those who are firm in resolve. As to the disciples of the knower of the world, those who have done their duty and received praise from the sugatas, who are freed from faults and have arrived at the last stage of bodily existence, the Gina knowledge lies beyond their sphere. <clears throat> if this whole sphere were full of beings like Sarasutta, and if they were to investigate with combined efforts, they would be unable to comprehend the knowledge of the Sugata. 10. 
even if the ten points of space were full of sages like thee, I, if they were full of such as the rest of my disciples, eleven, and if those beings combined were to investigate the knowledge of the Sugata, they would altogether not be able to comprehend the Buddha knowledge in its whole immensity. If the ten points of space were filled with Pratyaka Buddhas, free from fault, gifted with acute faculties, and standing in the last stage of their existence, as numerous as reeds and bamboos in the woods, and if combined for an endless number of myriads of Kotis of Aeons, they were to investigate a part only of my superior laws, they would never find out its real meaning. If the ten points of space were full of bodhisattvas, who, after having done their duty under many kotis of Buddhas, investigated all things and preached many sermons after entering a new vehicle, if the whole world were full of them as of dense reeds and bamboos without any interstices, and if all combined were to investigate the law which the Sugata has realized, if they were going on investigating for many kotis of aeons as incalculable as the sand of the Ganges with undivided attention and subtle wit, even then that knowledge would be beyond their ken. If such bodhisattvas are, are unable to fall back, numerous as the sand of the Ganges were to investigate it with undivided attention, it would prove to lie beyond their ken. Profound are the laws of the Buddhas, and subtle, all inscrutable and faultless. I myself know them as well as the Ginas do in the ten directions of the world. Thou, sorry Putra, be full of trust in what the Sugata declares. The Gina speaks no falsehood. The great seer, who has so long preached the highest truth, twenty, I address all disciples here, those who have set out to reach the enlightenment of Pratyaka Buddhas, those who are roused to activity at my nirvana, and those who have been released from the series of evils. 21. It is by my superior skillfulness that I explain the law at great length to the world at large. I deliver whosoever are attached to one point or another and show the three vehicles the eminent disciples in the assembly headed by Agnata Kaundinya, the 1200 Arhats, faultless and self-controlled, the other monks, nuns, male and female lay devotees, using the vehicle of disciples, and those who had entered the vehicle of Pratyaka Buddhas. All of them made this reflection. What may be the cause, what the reason of the Lord so extremely extolling the skillfulness of the Tathagatas? Of his extolling it by saying, profound is the law by me discovered of his extolling it by saying, it is difficult for all disciples and Pratyaka Buddhas to understand it. But as yet the Lord has declared no more than one kind of emancipation, and therefore, we also should acquire the Buddha laws on reaching nirvana. We do not catch the meaning of this utterance of the Lord. And the venerable Sariputra, who apprehended the doubt and uncertainty of the four classes of the audience and guessed their thoughts from what was passing in his own mind himself, being in doubt about the law, then said to the Lord, What, O Lord, is the cause, what the reason of the Lord so repeatedly and extremely extolling the skillfulness, knowledge, and preaching of the Tathagata? Why does he repeatedly extol it by saying, Profound is the law by me discovered? It is difficult to understand the mystery of the Tathagatas. Never before have I heard from the Lord such a discourse on the law. These four classes of the audience, O Lord, are overcome with doubt and perplexity. Therefore, may the Lord be pleased to explain what the Tathagata is alluding to when repeatedly extolling the profound law of the Tathagatas. On that occasion, the venerable Sariputra uttered the following stanzas. 22. Now first does the Son of Men 
utter such a speech, I have acquired the powers, emancipations, and numberless meditations. And thou mentionest the terrace of enlightenment without any one asking thee. Thou mentionest the mystery, although no one asks thee. Thou speakest unasked, and laudest thine own course. Thou mentionest thy having obtained knowledge, and pronouncest profound words. Today a question rises in my mind, and of these self-controlled, faultless beings striving after nirvana. Why does the Gina speak in this manner? Those who aspire to the enlightenment of Pratyakabuddhas, the nuns and monks, gods, nagas, goblins, Gandharvas and great serpents are talking together while looking up to the highest of men and ponder in perplexity. Give an elucidation, great sage, to all the disciples of Sugata here assembled. Myself have reached the perfection of virtue, have been taught by the supreme sage still, O highest of men, even in my position, I feel some doubt whether the course of duty shown to me shall receive its final sanction by nirvana. Let that voice be heard, O thou whose voice resounds like an egregious kettle drum. Proclaim thy law such as it is. The legitimate sons of Gina, here standing and gazing at the Gina with jointed hands, 30 as well as the gods, nagas, goblins, titans, numbering thousands of kotis like sand of the Ganges, and those that aspire to superior enlightenment, here standing fully 80,000 in number, further the kings, rulers of provinces, and paramount monarchs, who have flocked hither from thousands of kotis of countries, are now standing with jointed hands and respectful thinking, how are we to fulfill the course of duty? The venerable Sariputra. Having spoken, the Lord said to him, Enough, Sariputra, it is of no use explaining this matter. Why? Because Sariputra, the world, including the gods, would be frightened if this matter were expounded. But the venerable Sariputra entreated the Lord a second time, saying, Let the Lord expound, let the Sugata expound this matter. For in this assembly, O Lord, there are many hundreds, many thousands, many hundred thousands, many hundred thousand myriads of kotis of living beings who have seen former Buddhas who are intelligent and will believe, value, and accept the words of the Lord. The Venerable Sariputra addressed the Lord with this stanza. Speak clearly. O most eminent of Ginas. In this assembly, there are thousands of living beings trustful, affectionate, and respectful towards the Sugata. They will understand the law by the expounded. And the Lord said a second time to the venerable Sariputra, Enough, Sariputra, it is of no use explaining this matter for the world, including the gods, would be frightened, Sariputra, if this matter were expounded and some monks might be proud and come to a heavy fall. And on that occasion uttered the Lord the following stanza, Speak no more of it that I should declare this law. This knowledge is too subtle, inscrutable. And there are so many unwise men who in their conceit and foolishness would scoff at the law revealed. A third time the venerable Sariputra entreated the Lord, saying, Let the Lord expound, let the Sugata expound this matter. In this assembly, O Lord, there are many hundreds of living beings, my equals, and many hundreds, many thousands, many hundred thousands, many hundred thousand myriads of kotis of other living beings more who in former births have been brought by the Lord to full ripeness. They will believe, value, and accept what the Lord declares which shall tend to their advantage well and happiness in length of time. On that occasion, the Venerable Sariputra uttered the following stanzas. Explain the law, O thou most high of men, I, thine eldest son, beseech thee. Here are thousands of kotis of beings who are to believe in the law by thee revealed, and those beings that in former births so long and constantly have by thee been brought to full maturity, and now are all standing here with joined hands, they too are to believe in this law. Let the Sugata 
Seeing the 1,200, my equals and those who are striving after superior enlightenment, speak to them and produce in them an extreme joy. When the Lord for the third time heard the entreaty of the venerable Sariputra, he spoke to him as follows. Now that thou entreadest the Tathagata a third time, Sariputra, I will answer thee. Listen then, Sariputra. Take well and duly to heart what I am saying I am going to speak. Now it happened that 5,000 proud monks, nuns, and lay devotees of both sexes in the congregation rose from their seats and, after saluting with their heads the Lord's feet, went to leave the assembly. Owing to the principle of good which there is in pride, they imagined, having attained what they had not and having understood what they had not. Therefore, thinking themselves aggrieved, they went to leave the assembly, to which the Lord by his silence showed assent. Thereupon the Lord addressed the venerable Sariputra. My congregation, Sariputra, has been cleared from the chaff, freed from the trash. It is firmly established in the strength of faith. It is good, Sariputra, but those proud ones are gone, away. Now I am going to expound the matter, Sariputra. Very well, Lord, replied the venerable Sariputra. The Lord then began and said, It is but now and then, Sariputra, that the Tathagata preaches such a discourse on the law as this. Just as but now and then is seen the blossom of the glamorous fig tree, Sorry, Putra, so does the Tathagata, but now and then preach such a discourse on the law. Believe me, Sorry, Putra, I speak what is real. I speak what is truthful. I speak what is right. It is difficult to understand the exposition of the mystery of the Tathagata, Sorry, Putra. For in elucidating the law, Sorry, Putra, I use hundred thousands of various skillful means, such as different interpretations, indications, explanations, illustrations. It is not by reasoning, Sariputra, that the law is to be found. It is beyond the pale of reasoning and must be learnt from the Tathagata. For, Sariputra, it is for a sole object, a sole aim, verily a lofty object, a lofty aim that the Buddha, the Tathagata, etc., appears in the world. And what is that sole object, that sole aim, that lofty object, that lofty aim of the Buddha, the Tathagata, appearing in the world? To show all creatures the sight of Tathagata knowledge. Does the Buddha, the Tathagata, appear in the world? To open the eyes of creatures for the sight of Tathagata knowledge, does the Buddha, the Tathagata, appear in the world? This, O oh, Sariputra, is the sole object, the sole aim the sole purpose of his appearance in the world. Such then, Sariputra, is the sole object, the sole aim, the lofty object, the lofty aim of the Tathagata. And it is achieved by the Tathagata. For, Sariputra, I do show all creatures the sight of Tathagata knowledge. I do open the eyes of creatures for the sight of Tathagata knowledge, Sariputra. I do firmly establish the teaching of Tathagata knowledge, Sariputra. I do lead the teaching of Tathagata knowledge on the right path, Sariputra, by means of one sole vehicle, to wit, the Buddha vehicle, Sariputra, do I teach creatures the law. There is no second vehicle, nor a third. This is the nature of the law, Sariputra, universally in the world, in all directions. For Sariputra, all the Tathagatas, etc., who in times past existed in countless innumerable spheres in all directions for the well of many the happiness of many out of pity to the world for the benefit well and happiness of the great body of creatures and who preach the law to gods and men with able means such as several directions and indications various arguments reasons illustrations Fundamental ideas, interpretations, paying regard to the dispositions of creatures whose inclinations and temperaments are so manifold, all those Buddhas and Lords, Sariputra, 
have preached the law to creatures by means of only one vehicle, the Buddha vehicle, which finally leads to omniscience. It is identical with showing all creatures the sight of Tathagata knowledge, with opening the eyes of creatures for the sight of Tathagata knowledge, with the awakening or admonishing by the display or sight of Tathagata knowledge, with leading the teaching of Tathagata knowledge on the right path. Such is the law they have preached to creatures. And those creatures, Sariputra, who have heard the law from the past Tathagatas, have all of them reached supreme perfect enlightenment, and the Tathagatas who shall exist in future Sariputra, in countless innumerable spheres in all directions for the wealth of many, the happiness of many, out of pity to the world, for the benefit, wealth, and happiness of the great body of creatures, and who shall preach the law to gods and men, as above the right path. Such is the law they shall preach to creatures. And those creatures, Sariputra, who shall hear the law from the future Tathagatas, shall all of them reach supreme perfect enlightenment. And the Tathagatas who now at present are staying, living, existing, Sariputra, in countless innumerable spheres in all directions, etc., and who are preaching the law to gods and men as above, till the right path such is the law they are preaching to creatures and those creatures Sariputra who are hearing the law from the present Tathagatas shall all of them reach supreme perfect enlightenment I myself also Sariputra am at the present period a Tathagata for the will of many manifold I myself also Sariputra am preaching the law to creatures the right path such is the law I preach to creatures and those creatures, Sariputra, who now are hearing the law from me, shall all of them reach supreme perfect enlightenment. In this sense, Sariputra, it must be understood that nowhere in the world a second vehicle is taught, far less a third. Yet, Sariputra, when the Tathagatas happen to appear at the decay of the epoch, the decay of creatures, the decay of besetting sins, the decay of views, or the decay of lifetime. When they appear amid such signs of decay at the disturbance of the epoch. When creatures are much tainted, full of greed and poor and roots of goodness, then, sorry, preacher of the Tathagatas, etc., use skillfully to designate that one and sole Buddha vehicle by the appellation of the threefold vehicle. Now, Sariputra, such disciples, Arhats, or Pratya, Kabutas, who do not hear they're actually being called to the Buddha vehicle by the Tathagata, who do not perceive nor heed it, those Sariputra, should not be acknowledged as disciples of the Tathagata, nor as Arhats, nor as Pratya, Kabutas. Again, Shari Putra. If there be some monk or nun pretending to our hotship without an earnest vow to reach supreme perfect enlightenment and saying, I am standing too high for the Buddha vehicle. I am in my last appearance in the body before complete nirvana. Then Shariputra, consider such a one to be conceited. For Shariputra, it is unfit, it is improper that a monk, a faultless arhat, should not believe in the law which he hears from the Tathagata in his presence. I leave out of question when the Tathagata shall have reached complete nirvana. For at that period, that time, Shariputra, when the Tathagata shall be wholly extinct, there shall be none who either knows by heart or preaches such shutras as this. It will be under other Tathagatas that they are to be freed from doubts. In respect to these things, believe my words, Sariputra. Value them, take them to heart. For there is no falsehood in the Tathagatas, Sariputra. There is but one vehicle, Sariputra, and that the, be the Buddha vehicle. The Buddha vehicle. And on that occasion to set forth this matter more copiously, 
the Lord uttered the following stanzas. No less than 5,000 monks, nuns, and lay devotees of both sexes, full of unbelief and conceit, remarking this sight, went, defective in training and foolish as they were, away in order to be ware of damage. The Lord, who knew them to be the dregs of the congregation, exclaimed, They have no sufficient merit to hear this law. My congregation is now pure. Freed from chaff, the trash is removed and the pith only remains. Hear me, Shariputra, how this law has been discovered by the highest man, and how the mighty Buddhas are preaching it with many hundred proofs of skillfulness. I know the disposition and conduct, the various inclinations of cotis of living beings in this world. I know their various actions and the good they have done before. Those living beings I initiate in this law by the aid of manifold interpretations and reasons and by hundreds of arguments and illustrations have I, in one way or another, gladdened all creatures. I utter both shutras and stanzas, legends, gatakas, prodigies besides hundreds of introductions and curious parables i show nirvana to the ignorant with low dispositions who have followed no course of duty under many cotis of buddhas are bound to continued existence and wretched the self-born one uses such means to manifest buddha knowledge but he shall never say to them ye also are to become buddhas why should not the mighty one, after having waited for the right time, speak now that he perceives the right moment has come? This is the fit opportunity, met somehow of commencing the exposition of what really is. Now the word of my commandment, as contained in nine divisions, has been published according to the varying degree of strength of creatures. Such is the device I have shown in order to introduce creatures to the knowledge of the giver of boons. And to those in the world who have always been pure, wise, good mind, and compassionate sons of Buddha, and done their duty enter many cotis of Buddhas, will I make known amplified sutras. 50. For they are endowed with such gifts of mental disposition and such advantages of blameless outward form that I can announce to them, In future ye shall become Buddhas, benevolent and compassionate. 51. Hearing which, all of them will be pervaded with delight at the thought we shall become Buddhas preeminent in the world, and I, perceiving their conduct, will again reveal amplified sutras. And those are the disciples of the leader who have listened to my word of command. One single stanza learnt or kept in memory suffices. No doubt of it, to lead all of them to enlightenment. There is indeed but one vehicle. There is no second nor third anywhere in the world apart from the case of the Purushat Tamas, using an expedient to show that there is a diversity of vehicles. The chief of the world appears in the world to reveal the Buddha knowledge. He has but one aim indeed, no second. The Buddhas do not bring over creatures by an inferior vehicle. There where the self-born one has established himself and where the object of knowledge is of whatever form or kind, the powers, the stages of meditation, the emancipations, the perfected faculties, there are, the beings also shall be established. 56. I should be guilty of envy, should I, after reaching the spotless eminent state of enlightenment, establish any one in the inferior vehicle that would not beseem me. 
There is no envy whatever in me, no jealousy, no desire, nor passion. Therefore I am the Buddha, because the world follows my teaching. When splendidly marked with the 32 characteristics, I am illuminating this whole world and worshipped by many hundreds of beings. I show the unmistakable stamp of the nature of the law. Then, Shariputra, I think thus, how will all beings by the 32 characteristics mark the self-born seer who of his own accord sheds his luster all over the world? 60. And while I am thinking and pondering when my wish has been fulfilled and my vow accomplished, I no more reveal Buddha knowledge. If, O son of Sari, I spoke to the creatures, vivify. In your minds, the wish for enlightenment, they would in their ignorance all go astray and never catch the meaning of my good words. And considering them to be such, and that they have not accomplished their course of duty in previous existences, I see how they are attached and devoted to sensual pleasures, infatuated by desire and blind with delusion. From lust, they run into distress. They are tormented in the six states of existence, and people of the cemetery again and again, they are overwhelmed with misfortune as they possess little virtue. They are continually entangled in the thickets of sectarian theories such as it is and it is not, it is thus and it is not thus. In trying to get a decided opinion on what is found in the 62 heretical theories, they come to embrace falsehood and continue in it. They are hard to correct, proud, hypocritical, crooked, malignant, ignorant, dull. Hence they do not hear the good Buddha call, not once in cotis of births. To those son of Shari, I show a device and say, put an end to your trouble. When I perceive creatures vexed with mishap, I make them see nirvana. And so do I reveal all those laws that are ever holy and correct from the very first. And the son of Buddha, who has completed his course, shall once be Agina. It is but my skillfulness which prompts me to manifest three vehicles. For there is but one vehicle and one track. There is also but one instruction by the leaders. Remove all doubt and uncertainty. And should there be any who feel doubts, the lords of the world speak the truth. This is the only vehicle. A second there is not. The former Tathagatas also... <coughs> Living in the past for innumerable aeons, the many thousands of Buddhas who are gone to final rest, whose number can never be counted, those highest of men have all of them revealed most holy laws by means of illustrations, reasons, and arguments, with many hundred proofs of skillfulness, and all of them have manifested but one vehicle and introduced but one on earth by one vehicle have they led to full ripeness inconceivably many thousands cotis of beings. Yet the Ginas possess various and manifold means through which the Tathagata reveals to the world, including the gods, superior enlightenment in consideration of the inclinations and dispositions of the different beings. 74. And all in the world who are hearing or have heard the law from the mouth of the Tathagatas, given alms, followed the moral precepts, patiently accomplished the whole of their religious duties, who have acquitted themselves in point of zeal and meditation with wisdom, reflected on those laws, performed several meritorious actions, have all of them reached enlightenment. And such beings as were living patient, subdued, and disciplined under the rule of the Ginas of those times have all of them reached enlightenment. Others also who paid worship to the relics of the departed Ginas erected many thousands of stupas made of gems, gold, silver, or crystal. 78. Or built stupas of emerald, cat's eye, pearls, 
gregarious, lapis lazuli, or sapphire, they've all of them reached enlightenment. And those who erected stupas from marble, sandalwood, or eaglewood, constructed stupas from diodar, or a combination of different sorts of timber, eighty. And who in gladness of heart built for the Gina stupas of bricks or clay or caused mounds of earth to be raised in forests and wildernesses in dedication to the Ginas. The little boys even who in playing erected here and there heaps of sand with the intention of dedicating them as stupas to the Ginas, they have all of them reached enlightenment. Likewise have all caused jewel images to be made and dedicated. Adorned with the 32 characteristic signs, reached enlightenment. 83. Others who had images of Shugatas made of the seven precious substances of copper or brass have all of them reached enlightenment. Those who ordered beautiful statues of Shugatas to be made of lead, iron, clay, or plaster those who have made images of the Sugatas on painted walls with complete limbs and the hundred holy signs, whether they drew them themselves or had them drawn by others. Those even, whether men or boys, who during the lesson or in play by way of amusement, made upon the walls images with a nail or a piece of wood, have all of them reached enlightenment. They have become compassionate and by rousing many bodhisattvas, have saved cotis of creatures. Those who offered flowers and perfumes to the relics of the Tathagatas, the stupas, a mound of earth, images of clay are drawn on a wall, who caused musical instruments, drums, conch, trumpets, and noisy great drums to be played, and raised the rattle of timbals at such paces in order to celebrate the highest enlightenment, who caused sweet lutes, cymbals, tabors, small drums, reed pipes, flutes, Sugar cane to be made have all of them reached enlightenment. Those who to celebrate the Sugatas made iron symbols resound or small drums who sang a song sweet and lovely, they have all of them reached enlightenment. By paying various kinds of worship to the relics of the Sugatas, by doing but a little for the relics, by making resound, were it but a single musical instrument 93 or by worshiping were it but with a single flower by drawing on a wall the images of the sugatas by doing worship were it even with distracted thoughts one shall in course of time see gotis of buddhas 94 those who when in presence of a stupa have offered their reverential salutation be it in a complete form or by merely joining the hands who wore it but for a single moment, bent their head or body, and who at stupas containing relics have one single time said, Homage be to Buddha, albeit they did it with distracted thoughts, all have attained superior enlightenment. The creatures who in the days of those Shugatas, whether already extinct or still in existence, have heard no more than the name of the law, have all of them reached enlightenment. Many kotis of future Buddhas beyond imagination and measure shall likewise reveal this device as Ginas and Supreme Lords. Endless shall be the skillfulness of these leaders of the world, by which they shall educate kotis of beings to that Buddha knowledge which is free from imperfection. 99. Never has there been any being who, after hearing the law of those leaders, shall not become Buddha. For this is the fixed vow of the Tathagatas. Let me, by accomplishing my course of duty, lead others to enlightenment. 100. They are to expound in future days many thousand kotis of heads of the law. In their Tathagata ship they shall teach the law by showing the soul vehicle before mentioned. 101. The line of the law forms an unbroken continuity. The nature of its properties is always manifest. Knowing this, the Buddhas, the highest of men, shall reveal this single vehicle. They shall reveal the stability of the law 
It's being subjected to fixed rules. It's unshakable perpetuity in the world. The awaking of the Buddhas on the elevated terrace of the earth, their skillfulness. 103. In all directions of space are standing Buddhas, like sand of the Ganges, honored by gods and men. These also do for the well of all beings in the world expound superior enlightenment. Those Buddhas, while manifesting skillfulness, display various vehicles, though, at the same time indicating the one single vehicle, the supreme place of blessed rest. 105. Acquainted as they are with the conduct of all mortals, with their peculiar dispositions and previous actions with due regard to their strenuousness and vigor, as well as their inclination, the Buddhas impart their lights to them. By dint of knowledge, and the leaders produce many illustrations, arguments, and reasons, and considering how the creatures have various inclinations, they impart various directions. And myself also, the leader of the chief Ginas, am now manifesting for the will of creatures now living this Buddha enlightenment by thousands of kotis of various directions. I reveal the law and its multifariousness with regard to the inclinations and dispositions of creatures. I use different means to rouse each according to his own character, such as the might of my knowledge. I likewise use, I likewise see the poor wretches deficient in wisdom and conduct lapsed into the mundane world, retained in dismal places, plunged in affliction, incessantly renewed, fettered as they are by desire like the yak by its tail, continually blinded by sensual pleasure. They do not seek the Buddha and the Mighty One. They do not seek the law that leads to the end of the pain. Seeing the six states of existence, they are benumbed in their senses, stick unmoved to the low views and suffer pain on pain. For those, I feel a great compassion. On the Terrace of Enlightenment, I have remained three weeks in full, searching and pondering on such a matter, steadily looking up to the tree there. Keeping in view that king of trees, with an unwavering gaze, I walked around at its foot, thinking this law is wonderful and lofty, whereas creatures are blind with dullness and ignorance. Then it was that Brahma entreated me, and so did Indra, the four rulers of the cardinal points, Mahasvara, Isvara, and the host of Maruts by thousands of kotis, all stood with jointed hands and respectful while myself was revolving the matter in my mind and thought, what shall I do the very time that I am uttering syllables, colors, letters, beings are oppressed with evils. In their ignorance, they will not heed the law I announce, and in consequence of it, they will incur some penalty it would be better were I never to speak. May my quiet extinction take place this very day. But on remembering the former Buddhas and their skillfulness, I thought, Nay, I also will manifest this tripartite Buddha enlightenment. When I was thus meditating on the law, the other Buddhas in all the directions of space appeared to me in their own body and raised their voice, crying, Amen, amen, solitary, first leader of the world, now that thou hast come to unsurpass knowledge and art meditating on the skillfulness of the leaders of the world, thou repeatest their teaching, 120. We also, being Buddhas, will make clear the highest word divided into three parts, for men occasionally have low inclinations. And might perchance from ignorance not believe us when we say ye shall become Buddhas. Hence we will rouse many bodhisattvas by the display of skillfulness and the encouraging of the wish of obtaining fruits. And I was delighted to hear the sweet voice of the leaders of men and the exultation of my heart. I said to the blessed saints, the words of the eminent sages are not spoken in vain. I too will act according to the indications of the wise leaders of the world, having myself been born. In the midst of the degradation of creatures, I have known agitation in this dreadful world. When I had come to that conviction, O son of Shari, 
They instantly went to Benares, where I skillfully preached the law to the five solitaries, that law which is the base of final beatitude. From that moment, the wheel of my law has been moving in the name of Nirvana, made its appearance in the world, as well as the name of Arhat of Dharma and Sangya. Many years have I preached and pointed to the stage of Nirvana, the end of wretchedness and mundane existence. Thus I used to speak at all times. And when I saw, Sariputra, the children of the highest of men by many thousands of quotees, numberless, striving after the supreme, the highest enlightenment, and when such as had heard the law of the Ginas, owing to the many-sidedness of skillfulness, had approached me and stood before my face, all of them with jointed hands and respectful, then I conceived the idea that the time had come for me to announce the excellent law and to reveal supreme enlightenment for which task I had been born in the world. This today will be hard to be understood by the ignorant who imagine they see here a sign as they are proud and dull, but the bodhisattvas, they will listen to me. And I felt free from hesitation and highly cheered. Putting aside all timidity, I began speaking in the assembly of the sons of Shugata and roused them to enlightenment on beholding such worthy sons of Buddha. I said, Thy doubts also will be removed, and these twelve hundred disciples of mine, free from imperfections, will all of them become Buddhas. Even as the nature of the law of the former mighty saints and the future Ginas is, so is my law. Free from any doubtfulness, and it is such as I today preach it to thee. At certain times, at certain places, somehow do the leaders appear in the world, and after their appearance will they, whose view is boundless, at one time or another preach a similar law. It is most difficult to meet with this superior law. Even in myriads of cotis of aeons, very rare, are the beings who adhere to the superior law which they have heard from me. Just as the blossom of the glamorous fig tree is rare, albeit sometimes at some places, and somehow it is met with as something pleasant to see for everybody as a wonder to the world, including the gods. So wonderful and far more wonderful is the law I proclaim. Anyone who, on hearing a good exposition of it, shall cheerfully accept it and recite but one word of it will have done honor to all Buddhas. Give up all doubt and uncertainty in this respect. I declare that I am the king of the law. I am urging others to enlightenment, but I am here without disciples. 139. Let this mystery be for thee, Sariputra, for all disciples of mine and for the eminent bodhisattvas who are to keep this mystery. For the creatures, when at the period of the five depravities, are vile and bad, they are blinded by sensual desires of fools and never turn their minds to enlightenment. Some beings, having heard this one and sole vehicle manifested by the Gina, will in days to come swerve from it, reject the sutra, and go down to hell. But those beings who shall be modest and pure, striving after the supreme and the highest enlightenment, to them shall I unhesitatingly set forth the endless forms of this one and sole vehicle. Such is the mastership of the leaders that is their skillfulness. They have spoken in many mysteries, hence it is difficult to understand them. Therefore, try to understand the mystery of the Buddhas, the holy masters of the world. Forsake all doubt and uncertainty. You shall become Buddhas. Rejoice. 140-141.